Hey guys, so just before we begin, I want to remind you that I am offering coaching. And so if you resonate with my message or you feel a connection to what I'm saying, feel free to click the link in the description and you can book a free discovery call with me. Otherwise, let's jump in, into the video. So today I want to share with you a really deep observation that I've had on this path. And I've had it for a very long time. I've always noticed it. But now I feel a calling to share it with you guys. So here it is. When we chase pleasure, it subtly puts us out of rhythm with the universe and subtly puts us off our game. Now, this might not sound too bad, but if you're a self-aware person, uh, you, you know how this feels. It's the experience of feeling off, feeling out of tune, feeling out of sync, not only with yourself personally, but with everything you try and do. And in these moments, it really does suck because it feels like we've lost everything that's cool and magical, like our flow, our rhythm, uh, our connection, our momentum, even our ch even the chances of, us, of stuff going our way and us having cool synchronicities, right? All of this stuff just totally drops off once we lose touch with our self-discipline. And what I find this does is it actually brings us inside and it helps us to realize that we can't do things in the way that we want to if we're coming from this place of disharmony. Because when we're out of harmony with ourselves and the universe, it's as if we can't do anything right. <laughs> For example, the universe loves to give us these experiences that really teach us, stick with us, and make sure we get the message. And so this can look like being us being more clumsy, uh, dropping things, bumping into things, being late, feeling less spiritual, feeling less aligned. And you know, this stuff is not pleasant. So naturally, we'll want to escape this or stop this suffering from happening. However, we quickly learn that we cannot just avoid or escape this suffering. And we know this by observing our direct experience. So if we look inward, we can see, and we look at our experience, we can see that it is actually set up in such a way where we are aware and we are conscious of our experience. And what this means for us is when we suffer, we see it and we become very aware of it. However, it's good to know that this suffering, it's not just in the background, right? It purposefully sticks out to a point where we just cannot get away with ignoring it. And so what I'm suggesting here is that the universe within you actually wants you to notice this stuff and to realize that the path of pleasure, it cannot work for us. It's not the way. Now, a good question to ask here is, do we want to see this? Do we want to acknowledge this? And the answer is hell no, we don't. Because from the perspective of the ego, if we could, we would stay unaware and unconscious for as long as possible so that we could you know, put off changing our lives and withdraw into as much pleasure as we possibly could. And I say this because I've done this. I have burnt through a lot of my own karma to be here today and share with you that it's not the way to live. However, I also wanna share with you guys that when we try and raise our awareness of this stuff, it can feel a little bit like a mild ego death because it involves shedding uh, this old part of us, which we used to feed and keep alive with you know, these lower activities. Whereas now we're outgrowing it and we're actually letting go of those sweet rushes of dopamine. And by the way, I say they're sweet because from the perspective of the ego, they are, they're super sweet, they feel great. However, the tragic thing about this is from any other perspective, other than you know, having them and being in it, like for example, the perspective you have afterwards or the perspective you have when you're meditating and you're completely out of that space, is that these experiences are soul draining and life dampening. They dampen our lives. And, and they are precisely the reason why we feel out of rhythm with the universe, out of rhythm with ourselves. So it takes incredible balls and incredible awareness to surrender these times where you get to be in it and you get to be feeling that sweet pleasure. And that's so you can relinquish all those negative consequences, which again are so sour. They make us realize that the pleasure was never even sweet in the first place, right? It was always sour. It just had the short term appearance of sweetness. Now, there's no doubt that surrendering this stuff is one of the most worthwhile things you can do. But having done this myself, I want to let you know, and just be honest, 
that it can feel very sad to let go of these pleasurable experiences. It can feel very upsetting to know that you're not going to be able to have the same dopamine rushes again, even if they are, you know, not good for us, even if they are destructive. And, you know, for a long time, I wasn't even ready to make this move. I had way more karma to burn in this area. Um, you know, for a good few years on my, on my path, I would actually prefer to use PMO and to struggle and suffer through life because that's what I need to do. However, what changed things for me uh, was having this deep realization, which is if you let yourself be aware and be conscious, you will see that the universe is giving you so many signs and signals to stop and to live with more discipline and to have more respect for yourself. Now, you might be wondering, how did you have this realization in the first place? How did it arrive in your experience? And the truth is, I let it in when I was emotionally ready to do so. It was once I had burned through a lot of physical, material, sexual karma and pleasure for as long as I needed to, which was for a good few years, by the way. But significantly, I did this. As I did this, I was carefully watching myself the whole time, basically waiting for you know a spiritual intuition to come through and really pull me in the right direction. And that's exactly what happened. And what this looked like was after years of suffering, self-imposed suffering, by the way, I slowly opened myself up and then these intuitions, these gut feelings and these deep thoughts came through. And it was listening to these and not blocking them out that meant that I knew what I had to do. This also showed up for me in how the things that I wanted to do in life became almost impossible if PMO was still there. So for example, if you're in a relationship and you physically cannot use your thing, that is a sign from the universe that PMO has got to be surrendered in order for you to live life you know, normally and, and healthily. And so for me, it was an accumulation of these signs and signals that I eventually listened to and became serious about until my life started to purify and I was keeping the low consciousness behaviors to a minimum that I could work with. I also want to share with you guys this very important insight, which is how eventually we just become too aware of what we are doing. And we realize that we aren't doing legitimate damage to ourselves and our minds. And this doesn't sit very well with us because we become too aware that our suffering, it, it's so self-imposed, it's so self-created. And basically this means we're doing it to ourselves, right? And out of all the things that we could be doing, this is not what we really want. Because if we get nice and honest, what we really want is the richness out of life. We want the meaningful stuff. We want the stuff that feels difficult initially. But when we do it, we, we look at that and we, we say, wow, look at that. Look at what we've just done for ourselves. Look, we've moved out of our own way and we've experienced something that's good for us as a result. I also want to say that, you know, don't worry if you're not perfectly aligned with this just yet. You can only be where you are right now. And this whole thing, it's a process. It's not a quick fix or an easy thing to accomplish, right? It takes time. You have to go inward, listen to what the universe is saying, which I can tell you right now, if you really look, will be something like, you are perfect, no matter what you do. But if you want your human life to be more enjoyable, relinquish all of this PMO stuff and all of this casual sex stuff. Because more often than not, it will just put you off your game and it will put you out of, the, out of rhythm with the universe. And if you really get honest, that's not going to sit with you too well. So my final message is that it can be easy to see that the universe doesn't let us get away with relapsing. But it's difficult for us to integrate that the universe doesn't let us live this way. So the work here is not just in the noticing, it's in the integrating as well. And the way that you do this is a, is a mixture of two things, self-acceptance and powerful action taking. Do these two things by spending hours self-reflecting, contemplating, introspecting, and then acting on the deepest, truest, most meaningful thoughts that stick out to you, as these will be the ones that contain the most wisdom and the wisdom that you need to incorporate into your life if you're looking to have that long-term freedom from PMO and all of its suffering. So that is it for me. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this one, 
and you would like more, then my friend, please do subscribe.